Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to DC Kids Online. We are so excited that you decided to join us today. Yes, good morning, and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Hey, kids, make sure this day is extra special for your mother, and tell them how much you love them and give them a big hug. That is right. So we're going to get started with some rules this morning. Let's go over rule number one. When someone is speaking, you are listening. So good. That's right. Okay, rule number two is to share with an adult. So after you watch service or while you're watching service, make sure you share what you learned with an adult. That's right. And rule number three is so important. So here we go on the count of three. Let me hear you real loud in your home. One, two, three. Have fun. Today we're starting a brand new series called, But You're Just a Kid. In this series, tell us what we're going to see. So in this series, we're going to talk about several young children. And even though they were small, they did some really big things. That's right. And last week, we talked about a guy named David. And we're going to continue talking a little bit more about him today. But I think it's time for some praise and worship. Oh, yeah. I got to run. <laughs> okay, guys. It is time for worship. I want you to get up on your feet and let's get ready to worship this morning. <laughs>
you are young but set an example for the believers in speech in conduct in love in faith and in purity first Timothy 4 12 okay boys it is your turn I want you to stand up on your feet and say it with me one two three don't let anyone look down on you because you are young but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 Okay, great job guys. Girls, let's see if you can do it better. I want you to stand up with me, every girl in your house. Here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4.12 You know, today's power verse kind of makes me think of something. It was talking about like, don't look, let anyone look down on you because you're young. Let me tell you what happened to me one time. So, so I brought these cool hula hoops here because I have a story for you. So, so, so a couple of days ago, I tried to enter a hula hoop contest. Anybody ever tried to enter a contest? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it gets really fun. It gets really nervous. So I get up there to sign up for the contest. And you know what they say? You're not old enough for the contest. And I said, not old enough? They said, yes, you are too little. Whoa, 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 
whoa, whoa. I am not little Allegra de Snot. I am just Allegra de Snot. So I said, well, why am I too little? They said, well, you have to be a certain age to enter this context. And I said, well, you haven't seen my mad skills. So since they wouldn't let me share their, my skills with them, I'm going to share them with you. So are you ready? Here we go. On your mark, get set, go. Wow. Now, tell me I can't enter a contest and I'm too little. Well, maybe they are right. Maybe I couldn't enter that contest, but I'm not too little to do a lot of things and I'm not too young to do a lot of things and neither are you. Okay, see you next time. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We love you. You're the best. Happy Mother's Day. I love you so much, and I'm so grateful to have the best mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Today is your day to sit back and relax and enjoy your day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. You are the best mom in the world. I love you so much. I hope you have an incredible day. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. Love you. Hey, Mama. I love you. I'm so thankful for you and all the encouragement that you always give me. And you always help me to believe that uh, I can do anything with God's help. So hope that you have a wonderful day today. And uh, I just love you. And uh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my mom. One thing what I love about her the most is that she's very funny. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. You're the best. Love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. I love you. Hey, Mom. So I just wanted to take a second to wish you a happy Mother's Day and to tell you how much I love you and how much I appreciate everything you do for me. Happy Mother's Day. Hey, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I would not be the woman that I am today without you. I hope your day is absolutely incredible, and I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. You're the best. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I hope that you have a great day today. I love you and I appreciate everything that you've done for me. Putting up with me for over 30 years has probably not been the, the easiest thing, but I love you and I appreciate everything that you've done for me. Have a great day. And to all of our DC moms, we love you and we hope that you have an amazing day today. God's Story, David and Goliath. So part of God's story is about the time David fought Goliath. And it begins like this. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His job was being a shepherd, which meant he spent all day in a field watching sheep eat and roll around the grass. Meanwhile, some of his brothers were off with the Israeli army preparing for war against the Philistines. The Philistines were one of the toughest armies the people of Israel had to fight. So one day, David was taking food to his brothers because his dad asked him to. But when he got there, his brothers accused him of coming so he could watch the fight instead of the sheep. Since David knew in his heart he was just obeying his dad, he didn't mind being misunderstood. Anyway, while David was there, he saw a huge Philistine man, more than nine feet tall, step onto the field between the two armies. He was wearing a thick helmet and armor and carrying huge weapons. His name was Goliath, and he was definitely used to being the winner. David found out that Goliath had been stepping onto the field like this every morning for the past 40 days and saying, Give me a man and let us fight each other. But nobody from Israel was brave enough to fight him, even the king. Well, David didn't like that this giant was intimidating the Israelites. After all, they were God's special family. And because God was with the Israelites, they could have courage in any situation. So David, who wasn't even a soldier, told the king, I'll fight against him. Now, nah, the king thought David was too small, but he really wanted someone to fight Goliath. So he gave in. And David knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Goliath by himself, but he believed God would be with him. So he said, the Lord will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. The king hoped David was right, 
He even had his own weapons and armor put on David, but they didn't fit him. David decided to go into battle in his regular clothes. That's how sure he was that God would help him. Anyway, David went to a nearby stream and chose five smooth stones to use with his slingshot. Then he walked onto the battlefield to meet the massive Goliath. When Goliath saw how wimpy David looked, he was furious. He thought he'd get to fight the Israelite's strongest warrior. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. David might have looked like a wimp, but he was actually really brave. In fact, he was so brave that when he was taking care of sheep, he fought off bears and lions. Because God helped him protect his sheep, David knew God would help him protect this special family. David said, you come at me with a sword, but I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. He was explaining to Goliath that God was more powerful than anything. He also added that he would feed Goliath's flesh to the birds, which made the giant even more mad. Then David took a stone, put it in the slingshot, and slung it at Goliath. Goliath didn't even get a chance to swing a sword because the stone hit him right in the forehead and sunk in deep. He face planted straight into the ground. Nobody could believe it. Then David ran over, took hold of the giant's sword, and drew it from the sheath. He took the sword and cut off Goliath's head. David carried the head all the way back to Jerusalem. And when the Philistine army realized Goliath was dead, they started running away like a bunch of scaredy cats. The Israelites chased the Philistines, shouting loudly. They had won. God used David, who was just an average kid, to rescue his people. And that's the story of David and Goliath. So guys, we're going to jump into our message right now. And you just watched the story of David and Goliath. Now, he is one of my favorite Bible heroes. It's one of my favorite stories as I was a kid. And even now, there's so many things that we can pull out and, and use from his example that David showed us. But uh, in this series, You're Just a Kid, we're going to look at several different guys and, and people in the Bible that were just a kid. Maybe they were looked at as being young and, and insignificant, but they actually made a huge difference, just like David. Now, as a kid, you are told a lot and you hear a lot that you can't do things, right? You hear that you're too young to go there or you can't stay up that late or I know that you want to try that, but you're too young. You're just a kid. Now, a lot of adults say that, right? And, and the truth is there are a lot of things that you are too young for. You know, driving, buying a home, getting a job, getting married, okay? There are several things that, that you are too young to do. But it's also true that there are many great, amazing things that you can do. And that's exactly what God says about you, okay? In fact, the Bible tells us some great kids, about some great kids who did some amazing things. And, and with God's help, you can also do that, all right? David was one of the most famous kings that Israel had ever seen. But before he became king, he was a boy, as we saw in our clip, and, and he watched his dad's sheep. Now, a lot of people look at uh, a shepherd and don't think that that's a very important job. But David took it very seriously. In fact, we saw in our video that he killed a lion. He killed a bear just to protect those sheep. Like He put, he put his life on the line and in danger just to protect those sheep. And so the day that he went to see his brothers just to check on them and see how they were doing, he sees this big tall Goliath. And, and I'm not going to retell you the whole story, but he sees this big giant and he's making fun of God and he's making fun of Israel and he's calling them out. And all the Israelite army, they were afraid, right? Now they were adults that had weapons that were trained to do this, but yet they were afraid of this big giant Goliath. And so David's like, look, I don't care how old I am. Let me go out there. I will take this dude out. I'm not afraid of him because I've got God on my side. And I know that God will help me do whatever it is that I need to do. Take this giant out. God's got me. 
okay? And so he wasn't afraid. And of course, they were all telling him, man, you're just a kid. You can't do that. You, you, he's going to kill you. And, and of course, we all saw what happened. God used David to, to take out Goliath and, and take care of that threat. See, David had faith. David wasn't afraid. David, he eagerly went to battle because he knew that God was going to help him. Now, when you're picking people for your team, all right, you're playing, you're outside playing, about to play dodgeball or football or basketball or whatever you're playing, okay, you're going to pick the, the biggest, the strongest, the tallest, maybe the fastest kids or, or people that there is to take, right? Because we all want to win. And you think if you pick the best, the biggest, the strongest, that you will have a better chance of, of having victory. But you know what? God doesn't look at things like that. God doesn't look at our size or our strength or, or who we are, or where we come from, or how old we are. He doesn't look at any of that. God looks at our heart. And just like he saw a, a good heart in David, God can use each and every one of you, even though you're a kid. So the next time somebody tells you, ah, oh, you're just a kid, you, you, you're not, you, you can't amount to anything, you're not, you can't make a difference, that is not true because in this series, we're going to find out that that is not true at all. Everyone in this story, everyone in this series, they were used by God at a young age, and you can be too. He will use anyone who's willing to be used. He uses people regardless of age or experience or abilities, okay? God looks at the heart. He does great things through people, through kids, through anyone that has faith in Him, okay? What seems impossible to you is just an opportunity for God to do something big. Maybe you have big dreams and, and you're thinking, yeah, but there's no way that that can come to pass. There's no way that I can do that. Or, or there's no way that, that I can grow up and be that way or do that even today. But I promise you, if you will just turn to God, you'll trust God. Ask Him to do great things through you. Just because you're a kid doesn't mean that God can't use you. We, we're going to see that, see that today and we're going to see that in the next few weeks. God can use you in a, in a huge way way if you'll let him. So today I want to encourage you to pray and ask God, God, use me. It doesn't matter how old I am. I don't care that I'm short. I don't care that, you know, whatever. God, use me to do big things. So I want to encourage you with that today. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. God, I just thank you so much for your word. God, I, your word says, don't let anyone look down on us because we are young but for us to set an example. And so God, I just pray right now, I don't know who's watching, but God, I just pray for those that are watching right now. I don't care what their age is. I don't care what their abilities are, if they're strong or weak or tall or short. God, none of that matters. All they need to do is focus on you, trust in you, and ask you to help them today. Help them to do big things. Now, they may not can do it on their own, but God, through you, God, with your help, they can do impossible things. And so, God, I just speak to those these kids that are watching right now. God, I speak to them right now, and I pray a blessing over them. God, they are world changers. They are going to do great things with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you, and I cannot wait to be back in house with you. I just cannot wait. It's not going to be long. I can just feel that. But until we are together again, I love you guys and you have an amazing day. Make sure that you tell your mom how awesome she is and happy Mother's Day that you love her. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We love you guys. Have an amazing day.